This week, I was supposed to be talking about comparing this eye draw machine here with this AXA draw machine down here. But instead, I kind of got bullied into talking about my remote pen plotting tool instead. I mentioned it enough times that people started saying, hey, you gotta tell us about that tool and let us use it. So I guess this is that video. In short, I have a machine here under the table that's connected to the AXA draw on top because I got fed up of always having to have my laptop plugged into the AXA draw all the time. So I bought myself a cheap Mac mini and hooked it all up, which is great, but I have to get down here onto the floor to use it. And I'll much rather do all this from the comfort of my chair over there. So I wrote a very minimal wrapper around Axadraw's own command line tool, and that's literally all it is. It's just a nice UI that just runs the command line tool under the hood. I could, if you're being technical, connect to that Mac mini down there from this laptop here, but I also wanted something else that the command line doesn't give you, and that's an estimate of the time when the plot itself will finish. The command line will tell you how long something will take, but I got tired of trying to add four hours, 45 minutes to whatever time it is now to then calculate the end time. And then also remembering all the other command line options that you use. The other thing, if I just move you around, that it allows me to do is kind of stay organized so I can put different things in different directories. So here, if we look in the backing boards directory, I can see I've got a whole bunch of boards that I use for my packaging stuff. If I go back here, I've got useful tools like the calibration tools so it puts a little check mark in the corner. So I've got one for A4, A5, A6. I can click one of those just to make sure that everything's lined up in between layers of plot. So that I find really useful. But before I show you all this, let me show you the command line tool in a little bit more depth because it'll make this make much more sense. Let's get back over here. I'm gonna grab my laptop, bring it with me. And maybe if you haven't seen the command line tool before, and I'll link to it below, you might decide just to use this because it is actually pretty simple and most people don't seem to know about it or use it. I've got my laptop connected to this AXA drawer. Here's the command line tool. We're just gonna make this thing toggle up and down. So you can see the commands here, but if I were to go AXE CLI minus minus mode toggle, then it toggles. I can do that again and again, toggling up and down, nice and easy. And another thing is when the X draw is powered up, you can't actually move all this carriage around. So if I show you over here, so I can't move this. If I type in the command minus minus mode align, then the motors become disengaged and I can move it around wherever I want, nice and simple. So if I want the X draw to plot something, I just tell it the file name of the thing that I wanted to plot. So here we go, design SVG. And off it goes, it starts doing it. Let me just, Cancel that, realign it. So if you're thinking to yourself, hey, that was really easy, I don't need to use Inkscape, then you're totally right. You can just tell it, yeah, I want you to plot that file and you're done. Alrighty, a couple more things. If I want to have a preview of how long that will take, I can type preview and then port time. It'll tell me how long it thinks it's gonna to take to do that. 27 seconds in this case, because it's a very simple design. As I've said before, I tend to run my plot slower so you can adjust the speed. The default speed is 25%, but I often go down to 10 or 15%. So if I set the speed to 10 like that, I can see it's gonna take 42 seconds. This one that I'm showing you here is when you add minus minus progress onto the end of it, and every time it finishes drawing a line, which obviously works better on plots of lots of small lines, it updates the progress bar, so you can see how close you are towards the end. Really useful. The very last one I'll show you is where you go minus minus web hook to tell it to use a web hook, and then web hook URL, and then you type in a URL here that you want it to go hit. And then when the plot's finished, it will try to hit that URL. Let me show you over here. For example, using this website called if this then that IFTT, you can set up a web hook. Mine here says, if it gets the event AxaDraw finished, then send an email to revdadcat at gmail.com. So using that, I can set the plot away and when it's finished, sends me an email. There's a lot of stuff you can do on this website from sending yourself a text message all the way up to flashing the lights on and off in your house if you're wired up as a smart house. This is not a video about this website, but there's a lot you can do here. While you can see this is really useful from setting up the web hook to all those command line parameters you can use, I kind of get tired of remembering them all the time. 
which is where the minimum viable plotter tool comes in that wraps all that into the UI. Let's get onto that now. So just to recap, this is a very light web server that's installed on the machine that's connected to the Axa Draw, in my case, the Mac Mini that's down there. And then you can either connect to it using a web browser on the machine itself, or what I do across the network, or what I really like to do is once the SVG file is uploaded, I can use the browser on my phone to connect to it, and then I can trigger it from my phone, which is really great when I'm videoing things because I can be right next to the machine and then set it away and know it's about to go. If you're feeling really brave, you probably could tunnel out to the outside world and control it from anywhere in the world. That's probably not a good idea, I wouldn't have thought. Anyway, back to the UI here. I've got all my normal commands. So I've got my toggle. So I can toggle it up and down. It's kind of neat. Uh, obviously I've got my align so I can disengage those motors. Here I can upload a file. So I go pick the SVG file and I upload it. I can go into my directories, pick something to plot like one of the backgrounds. Yeah, let's do that. Let's pick a backing board. Number two over here, I've got an estimate of the time. It says it's going to be 30 minutes. I can put a web hook in if I want to, but if I want to make it go faster, I'll change this to 40 and take the constant speed off. Preview it. Now it says it's going to take 10 minutes, nine seconds, and then gives me a new finishing time, which is really cool. Once I'm ready to plot it, I'll just hit the plot button. And off it goes. I don't have to crawl around on the floor to get it to work at all. It's really great. You can't pause it from here. You can't stop it from here. You have to go over to the machine to do all of that type of stuff. And all this is doing here is literally just refreshing the page every five seconds and using the estimated time. So there's nothing really smart going on here between this and what's actually happening over there. But I still really love the fact that it's giving you this end time and the remaining time over here. Let's take you off here. <laughs> right, let's go. Um, let's go pause this and also stop this from recording. We don't need that. The other thing that it doesn't do that would be really useful is it can only control one axe draw at a time. I'd really like it to control multiple axe drawers. Maybe I'll add that at some point. The reason why I haven't released it publicly before is as soon as you do that, you're kind of putting yourself up for then having to support it and make sure it works for everybody else. But people are saying that they wanted it or they're interested in it. And now that you've seen, it's just like this wrapper around the command line tool. Maybe you'll just use the command line. Maybe you could use Python to write your own version of it, but is there if you want it. I've put it up on GitHub. I'll add all the links down below. Maybe you'll find it useful. Maybe you won't. I don't know, but I thought I'd put it out there anyway. The readme file has a lot more information in it. And honestly, it's worth it to me to not have to use Inkscape at all. Just avoid the whole Inkscape thing. Right, I think we're done now. I think that's everything. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Over the next few weeks, months, we're going to be doing a lot more pen plotting stuff. So stick around for that. I will see you in the next video. I love you all. Bye. <laughs> bye. I uh, gotta, gotta work on that. Okay. Bye.